guys this is shivaradi welcome to the session on multi threading in java in this session we are going to look at what is the multitasking and multi processing and multi threading and uh, the life cycle of a thread and then we are going to look at what are the disadvantages of the multi threading so first let us go ahead at what is the multitasking multitasking is the process of executing the multiple tasks simultaneously is known as a multitasking so in order to achieve the multitasking there are there are two ways uh, uh, we can achieve the multitasking one is multi processing and another one is the multi threading so first let us look at what is meant by multi processing multi processing is a uh, process of executing the multiple process simultaneously is known as a multi processing when we say multi processing what is going to happen internally is whenever you create a each process it has its own memory address it will be allocated in the um, in the memory and then it is going to be a heavy weight process because for the process it is going to allocate the resources like a cpu and uh, memory and then register uh, registering the uh, address and also whenever a context switch uh, context switch between happening from the one process to another process what cpu is going to do is it is going to save the current state of a process in a particular um, uh, registry and then it will be moved to the another process and again when it a uh, context switch between happening for the old process again it needs to update the registries memory addresses and then it needs to come back to the old process so that is the reason we called as a multi processing is a heavy weight and uh, uh, the cost of operation between the uh, multiple threads is going to be very high because because of the switching between the threads is uh, uh, having a lot of operations like updating the cp updating the registries saving the current state of an uh, thread and then uh, allocating the resources um, to the another thread so this is going to be a costly operation so that is the reason in order to overcome this problem java comes with the concept of multi threading so thread is a lightweight um, component which has its uh, separate path of the execution and also all the threads uh, within the same process can run independently and one more advantage of this uh, uh, multi threading is in a single process you have uh, multiple threads running parallelly and which are going to use the common shared resources that means you can utilize the resources very efficiently so the main uh, advantage of the the main advantage of the multi threading is the first one is the we are going to use the cpu efficiently because in the case of process if one process is executing it is needs to be uh, the cpu is going to be ideal for the lot of time whenever any io operation happening something in that case uh the context switch is going to be takes time but in the case of threads it is going to use the common shared resources so whenever one thread is have one thread is doing some io operation then it can switch to the another thread and executing that thread and again it can come back to the old process so this is the main advantage of the uh, multi threading that is effectively usage of the cpu and second one is so threads are lightweight sub process they share the common memory space so in multi thread environment program that are benefited from the multi threading utilize the maximum cpu so that ideal time can going to be minimum so that is the another advantage of the thread now let us consider um now let us consider the thread so we are calling as a thread is a lightweight component now what is going to happen is so uh, when you create a process Uh, within the process it can have a more than one thread which are going to use the same common shared resources now let us consider what is the life cycle of a thread so when an thread is created it has uh, going through the uh, lot of steps during its life cycle so let us consider what are the those uh, uh, st uh, those um, uh, states for the different uh, stages of a threads i am going to explain this one using a diagrammatic representation so this is the uh, different stages of the threads first one is whenever you create a just a, you create a thread then this will be in the new state that means this this just now it has created but it not at submitted to the cpu to execute it so that means 
thread new equal to new thread so that stage it will be in the new state and it is also called as a just one thread and once you create a thread then you are going to say that thread dot start then what happens is that will coming into the runnable status that means when you say thread dot start what happens is the thread will be submitted to the thread scheduler now the shed thread scheduler will be keep on looking for availability of the cpu and based on the cpu availability the thread scheduler will take the thread whatever it is coming into the queue and it will submit it to the cpu now that stage we call as a runnable now once it comes to the runnable status now cpu whenever it gets the uh, idle time happens then it will pick up the thread and it will start uh, it will start running it so then the thread will come to the running status once the running thread will be in the running status if there is no blocking or the io operations nothing happens or any lock is not happening on that then it will execute and it will go to the terminate status for example whenever any thread is running there might be a different situations where thread can go from the running status to a wait block first one is if any high priority thread comes then whatever the run uh, running thread it comes it might be go for the waiting states and next one whenever you call express the wait condition then it will go for the wait status or any io operation is happening then what happens is the running thread will be uh, coming uh, going from the running state to running state to uh, wait state once the wait happens for example if uh, if you apply the wait condition then from running to wait it will have whenever you notify again this will come to the runnable status and now cpu will utilize uh, cpu will give the some time slot for this uh, uh, thread and again it will come to the running status so basically whenever you apply a locking or sleep or wait condition then it is possible that the current running thread will be come, uh, going from the running state to the wait state from there based on our operation it will again come to the runnable and it will start executing and finally it will be going to the terminated status so at any point of time you can remember that at any point of time a single thread has a, at least only a, a, at a, any point of time it has only one state either it might be a new or runnable or running or terminated or the wait status okay so this is the uh, life cycle of a thread so whenever we are working with the threads so based on the our upper, based on our uh, program execution and the priorities of the queues uh, priorities of the threads and uh, based on the operations we are going to invoke then these are, there is a chances of it is going to the waiting and again it will go for the block or uh, again it will go go and run the threads so this is the uh life cycle of the thread now if i go back to the our threads so first one is the new so the thread not had started in this state and then runnable a thread is executing the java virtual machine it, uh, it is in state and blocked is whenever any blocked is nothing but a thread that is uh, blocked for waiting is either it might be asleep or wait or it might be acquiring it is waiting for the acquire the lock also so that is called as a blocked status waiting so waiting waiting is nothing waiting state is nothing but it is waiting for the execute uh, for the cpu utilization or it is might be waiting for the acquiring the lock to execute the process then it will be in the waiting status time out it is you can specify that uh, you can you can stop the thread for few uh, milliseconds or the seconds using the sleep method in that case it will be timeout once timeout happens automatically the thread will come into the running status and then finally it is in the terminated that means the thread will uh, successfully executed the um, uh, executed or uh, or some sometimes what happens a harvest happens it won't take and it finally it is getting the terminated so these are the different stages of the uh, thread and now let us uh, see what are the main um, uh, what are the disadvantage of the multi threading as we know that multi threading having lot of benefits uh, to utilize the cpu um, effectively still we have a few of the drawbacks if you don't understand the multi threading concept completely and you are trying to implement the multi threading in your application then there is a adverse impact uh, adverse impact on the performance because whenever we are because threads are going to use the common shared resources and in the multi threaded environment if you don't um, 
restrict the access of uh, updating or the reading the uh, resources properly then there are two problems one is incons inconsistency data inconsistency is the one problem and another problem is uh, it it will keep on waiting for the logs or it is keep on waiting for the uh, it is it is keep on waiting and uh, so that what happens is the performance of the application is going to be very um, uh, it is going to be impacted more so that is the reason be careful with the multi threading so if you have a situation where you have the multi threading environment where you are trying to access the common shared resources then only you need to apply for this multi threading so how to um, how to restrict the only one thread at a time it can access the shared resources that we are going to see in the synchronization um, concept but at this point of time make sure uh, what the point here is that as multi threading is going to use the common shared resources if we don't implement the proper restriction access to allow uh, to allow only one thread at a time it can access the shared resources then there will be a problem with the data inconsistency and also it is going to be impact the uh, impact the performance of the application because you need to apply synchronization for the multi threading to make sure that our uh, our uh, multi threading works perfectly hope you are uh, clear with the multi threading and uh, thread life cycle in the next session we are going to see how to create a uh, threads in java using an example thanks for watching if you have any questions please comment on my youtube video please do subscribe to get the more technical videos from my end